for 10 minutes, we'll be joined by student athletes from Gonzaga right here, Shemek Karnowski, Jonathan Williams, and Nigel Williams Goss. So from 12 noon to 1230, we'll have head coach Mark Few. After a period of time, Shemek Karnowski, Jonathan Williams, and Nigel Williams Goss will join us here in the main interview room. Student athletes move to the breakout rooms from 1235 to 1255. And then student athletes are available in the locker rooms, those non-starters that won't be doing photos, et cetera, uh, from 1 to 1.30. So from 12 noon to 1.30, that's Gonzaga availability. Again, head coach Mark Few and selected student athletes will be here in the main interview room. Then we'll have student athlete breakouts. And then the reserves will be in the locker room for availability as well. Gonzaga is from 12 to 1.30. If anybody needs that info again, feel free to ask. And I'll go through that again. For North Carolina, from 145 to 215, head coach Roy Williams will join us here in the main interview room. After about 10 minutes, Theo Pinson and Joel Berry II will join us here as well. So we'll have coach Theo and Joel. Then from 220 to 240, the North Carolina five starting student athletes will be available in the breakout rooms. That's from 220 to 240. And then from 245 to 315, the North Carolina locker room will be open for student athlete availability. That will be with the reserves. The five starters will be taking specialty shots and photos, et cetera. So North Carolina availability will be from 145 to 315 today. Gonzaga will be from noon in just a few minutes until 130. Any questions? Okay. When joining us here in the main interview room, just a reminder to please silence your cell phone. No flash photography of any kind is permitted here in the main interview room. Also, no video recording of any kind, with the exception of the rights holders over here on the left in the aisle with the very fancy tripod and stabilizer, et cetera. No video recording, no publishing live to social media at any point during the entire weekend, anywhere here in the arena. Just a reminder on that. And if you need satellite information, the gentleman and lady from Hammond Communications have that in the back. I also have that up here. It's the same satellite information that we've used all week and weekend. We'll have head coach Mark Few in just a few minutes, followed by student athletes from Gonzaga as well. And then once again at 145, availability starts with North Carolina. Head coach Roy Williams will be here, student athletes, then breakouts then the open locker room. <clears throat> oh, maybe You're here. How are you, dude? I thought you were in New York. Do you have any wire cutters? Any like a big, like a hedge clipper or something like that? The chairs are strung together still. What about the you guys in the room down the hall? Those, those guys are no good? Not interested. Are you excited, Drew? Me too. Do you have it? We may have to go uh, special ops on this. What's that? Yeah, it's going to be like dancing with the stars. Everybody's going to have to step very carefully and all that. I'm on this mic. Do you have the key? Excellent. Thank you, just in time. <laughs> and 
now saved. Ready for you, Coach. Coach Few has arrived in the main interview room. Happy Sunday, Coach. Yeah. Great to see you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're joined by the head coach of Gonzaga, Mark Few, and in just a few moments we'll be joined by select Gonzaga student athletes. Breakout sessions to follow and open locker room. After that, we'll begin with questions for Coach Few, and we'll start just to the left of the aisle. Tom. Hi, Mark. Tom Rock from Newsday. Hey. Uh, a couple of days ago, you, you uh, talked about your early days with the program. You said they were simpler, more innocent times. <laughs> I don't want to suggest that you would trade any of this success, but th does a part of you look back and sort of um, desire to go back to those, uh, may maybe the, the purity of those days? Uh, not really. No, I mean, I, we experienced it, you know, and uh, it, it was part of this, and it's, it's probably why we're here uh, on this day. And I, I don't, if, if we w hadn't went through that, we probably would have never prepared ourselves to, ha to do this. And so, uh, no, I mean, I'm enjoying the, the, the spot I'm in uh, uh, right now. Not to say I didn't enjoy that. Like, like I said, it was kind of footloose and fancy free, and, and we didn't know any better. But, uh, you know, I'm enjoying this phase now, too. On the right side, second to last row. Mark, Brian Hamilton from Sports Illustrated. Kind of along those lines, in terms of basketball resources, how would you compare where you are now maybe than – for where you guys were when you started, and how much more do you hear yes now than maybe when you first started? Uh, uh, basketball resources. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, z zero to like five hundred percent. You know, like not even one percent. So, you know, business guys, it's not a one x, a two x. It's like a ten x deal. You know, where. Uh, you wouldn't even recognize the place. I mean, those, uh, or they wouldn't recognize how we travel, how we recruit, uh, how we operate. And, and that is 100%, uh, all the credit goes to Gonzaga for, you know, or my athletic director, Mike Roth, uh, Far Father Spitzer, now Thane McCullough, our board of trustees has all realized if we invest in the program, it's gonna kind of grow everything. So we owe it to them for that. On the right side up front, Coach Dean Thompson, NBC News. Um, what are your first impressions about North Carolina, and what is the biggest challenge they present to you guys? Uh, I mean, I don't have, like, first impressions. Uh, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I follow them. I've, uh, I've always followed Roy's teams. Uh, my first five, uh, gosh, all the way into Turioff years maybe. Um, uh, you guys got to help me on that saying, uh, you wordsmiths out there. Uh, uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery or whatever, whatever is, is that right or wrong or backwards or something, but it, it's meant the same way. I, we called it the Kansas break. I ran the Kansas break for my first seven years, their whole transition deal. I just copied it, boom, and that's all we did through our early years uh, just because I had so much uh, uh, respect for Roy and it fit with what we were doing and our philosophies were the same as far as playing fast and just running the secondary break and and uh, so I watch them a lot and I've I, I mean I've probably watched them 15 times this year just because I'm a fan of his and a fan of theirs and and root for him and uh, so I, I I don't really have a first impression I have about a hundred impressions of them that are built in over the years. The biggest challenge is that their transition defense is yeah, it was part of the same question. I got that you. counts. I just, I just the microphone. <laughs> it's a continuation. Uh, uh, I got you. I got you. Uh, transition, obviously. I mean, we've got to. It's going to be the biggest challenge getting back and and just they're so fast and they're so good uh, at it. And then obviously keeping them off the glass. They are. Uh, I mean, they're as good as it gets in college basketball with uh, offensive rebounding, and they, they have a plan, and they do it well, and their guys understand it. And, and uh, so those two things, but then I don't want to undervalue or underrate or, you know, their defense. There's a reason they're in the national championship game. I mean, their defensive numbers, I was looking at the analytics today on that, and they're, they're, they're really solid there also. Just a number of questions, limited time. Just wait for the microphone for the follow-up. Up to the left. 
Hey, Coach, J.B. Ricks with uh, Spectrum News. Uh, similar question to what was just asked you, but in a more specific context with these two teams, they match up with each other very, very well. Obviously, they have the experience over, over you guys, but off of the top of your head, what would be a clear advantage that North Carolina would have over you guys, regardless of you, know, you guys matching up very well? Coaching. <laughs> Let's start with that. I mean, he's been in this game like 17 times, and this is the first for me. So uh, definitely start with that, probably end with that. Uh, you know, I, I, we're different. I mean, we're, we're the same, but we're different. You know, uh, uh, we both like to go inside out. I think they've probably got some guys that can get to their own shot a little easier than we can. Obviously, with uh, Justin Jackson, that's something that uh, he can really, really do. So uh, probably that. Left side, second row, Jim. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Coach, this game, college basketball has advanced and evolved so much since the very first tournament in 1939. Where do you see the game going? I mean, can the athletes get any better? Can the technology get any better? How is this game going to evolve even more? I mean, these guys are already almost NBA caliber. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think it'll do nothing but just keep, you know, Tracking upwards. I mean, the kids are playing more and more. I think that's what you're seeing. So they're more and more comfortable. These freshmen are are comfortable on the national stage. You know, they've played a lot and they've they they're used to uh, uh, playing, not in games this big, but they're to them it's just playing. So uh, I see that happening. I, I also sometimes it, you know we go in in phases. Uh, you know, we kind of are a little behind the NBA. We kind of see what they do, and I think. Uh, you know, ball screens now are the are the rave. We'll probably move back to some sort of motion, I bet, and screening offenses here in the next three or four or five, seven years. And, and uh, uh, again, as guys get more and more a athletic and better to probably spread out and drive and, and, and come off screens and things like that. So, again, I, I mean, I, it's been awesome just to see from a college basketball standpoint how much we've – came over the years and just what a what I mean I've been coming to this thing for 28 years and it just keeps getting bigger and better and better as far as just the overall effect of a final four and and uh you know hopefully we'll just stay in growth mode a reminder for the gentleman all the way back to the left no video recording please and we're going to stay on the left side nice. right yeah I like to I do the same thing in practice when they try to sneak in our practices <laughs> we send the managers up there yep. yeah yeah Hey, Coach Few, Jeff Gravely, uh, WRL in Raleigh, North Carolina. Coach Williams was telling the great story of 2009 in Memphis <laughs> when you guys piled your coaches in cars and went out and had a little fun. He got pulled over, told the cop to pull you over. Exactly. What's your recollection of that, and did you get pulled over? <laughs> I love the fact, and, and, I, and I defer to him, because it's the best-kept secret forever, because I think we probably would have got crucified at the time for doing that. But uh, staffs talked. And we said, hey, you know, we got nothing going. Let's have meetings and films and let the kids, uh, you know, go to bed or whatever. And then let's, let's all rally down to, uh, I think it's Tunica. Is that the name of the place? It's a little down there, just about 35 minutes outside of uh, uh, Memphis. So, uh, again, to your question about how much the NCAA has improved, uh, we all piled into, I think I had six, seven guys in a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> and I think Roy had the same. We rallied down there. Uh, we had got our table all to ourselves, played craps. It was awesome. We all got our butts kicked and handed to us and lost, lost some money, but we had fun. And then we heading back, and, and uh, he got pulled over and told the cop to, uh, hey, you're going to see another. First of all, the cop recognized him. was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he explained to him, and he said, there's another like little Ford Fiesta coming. Make sure you pull them over because they're illegal. They don't have seat belts because we had more guys in the car. <laughs> but they missed us. Uh, so he came running up to my assistants the next day, and did you, did you, you know, and my assistant was looking at him, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, I told the cops to pull you guys over. And, uh, so we skated through there, uh, luckily. Great story, though, and just, uh, you know, shows you, what a good guy he is and Steve Robinson's on our staff I've known him forever he's a dear friend and uh, just great people front and center Steve I'm Mark Steve Futterman from CBS News I wanted to ask you there's this perception of giant ACC 
Carolina against tiny little Gonzaga. And I know that's not the perception that necessarily is the reality, but there is an idea that what you have built there is sends a message to other places that are trying to, to achieve something that may not look to be realistic. What do you think the message is about Gonzaga reaching this point and being in the championship game? I think it's that, that we're no longer, you know, the little, however you described it. I mean, I don't think we're, I mean, I think, you know, we are. I, we don't pretend or think uh, we're anywhere near the level with the tradition of Carolina. Uh, or Duke or Kentucky, but at the same time, I, I think we do feel we're, we've been a national entity for for quite some time. Uh, you know, the the product, the the brand, the the players, the the team that we're putting out there on the floor, we feel can compete with anybody in the country on any given night. Uh, but we we understand we don't have that, you know, the tradition that dates back 40, 50, 60 years, and uh, so we defer to that. But we also think that. Uh, you know, it's a national brand and national entity, and, and, you know, we're not going anywhere. Toward the back on the left side. Hey, Coach, Nick Levine, Guardian. When you look at how Carolina defends and guards and with just one day prep, are you really just talking to your guys about how they guard ball screens, how they guard the post? Uh, you know, we, we try to, to – uh, break this thing down as easy as we can for our guys to assimilate. And I got a really, really uh, uh, smart team this year that we can throw stuff at at practice like today and then walk through tomorrow that they can uh, execute. So, uh, you know, we're shuffling through all our, uh, our things that we like to do on offense after watching them that they, we think we can do. And, and uh, uh, obviously going to going to try to, you know, play off those things. But at the same time, you know, we're uh, – I don't know whether 38 games into it or something now. So we're both kind of we are who we are. You know, you can tweak things like 10% here, or, you know, 10% there. But uh, both we like throwing the ball inside, and they like throwing it inside, and we're going to put our guards in ball screens. I think Carolina knows that. And then we'll just play off however they guard us. They've guarded ball screens a bunch of different ways, and they change up during games. And, and uh, But my guys are, are pretty adept at making those reads. And, Hopefully they'll be good tomorrow night. Coach, we'll move to the right side. Ralph. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Uh, Mark, you mentioned your relationship with Coach Williams, and he's called you a close friend. I guess what was it about that re about Coach Williams that made that relationship cl click? And do you consider him a mentor at all, or is it yeah. just a friendship? No, absolutely. He was a mentor, uh, somebody that I looked up to. Uh, when I was first getting in, and I can tell you exactly. I mean, my wife and I, uh, Marcy, we're on one of the, I think it's probably the first Nike trip we were ever on, uh, you know, which is a gathering of just basically legendary uh, uh, coaches. And, I mean, we, we didn't feel like we were worthy. We didn't feel like we belonged when there's, you know, there's uh, Roy and Coach K and Bayheim and all these guys are walking around. And, and uh, bang, right when we got there, he and Wanda took Marcy and I under their wing and just treated us like we were – anybody else and I and I mean it couldn't have made us feel better and more welcome and and uh, uh, just hanging with him talking with him you know there's a great uh, card game at the Nike uh, uh, trip and getting invited to play that and getting getting to know those guys in that realm uh, uh, is something that you remember as much as the wins out on the court to be quite honest with you just the relationships you build uh, with these guys you wish everybody could see how good of people these are, you know, when, when you're outside the competitive uh, part of the business. So uh, the other thing that I've always respected is how he's run his program. Um, he has an impeccable character. Uh, he, and so he's been a mentor to me. You can, you can win at the highest level and not cut corners and not, you know, you know cut your value system, cut your morals. Uh, I've always been impressed uh, uh, with him, both at Kansas and at, at Carolina. I mean, they, when you, you know, when you recruit against those guys, and it's rare, at least for us, we're probably going to get beat, <laughs> but you know they're doing it the right way, and you never, ever, ever question that. And, and I have, uh, couldn't respect a guy uh, more in this business. In that same area, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Mark, I know you have Dan Munson and 
Leon and Bill and all these guys with you on this run. What Ray Jackaletti? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, why is it important to you to have all these guys with you? Because they've been a, a huge, huge part of this. I mean, they, have, they are part of the guys that built this foundation to where it is. It never would have happened without them. I never would have been coaching without Dan Munson, uh, you know, uh, giving me a job and, and believing in me and letting, and letting me grow and, and doing all that. So um, I want them to feel like they're a part of it because they are. I want my players to know they're a part of it, which they do. And uh, it's just been awesome to uh, uh, share it with them. We had a good uh, session last night, and it was, it was, you know, beating South Carolina, advancing was here, and hanging with those guys last night was right there. So pretty good stuff. In the back row toward the right. Yeah, Mark, uh, Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard about this, but in the U.S. there's an Eastern bias. And, um, and – uh, I was wondering. See, I, I have, we have a Western bias. See, I don't think you guys know the first thing about fly fishing or getting out and enjoying. Or except for Dana, she knows how to surf a little bit and she knows how to get out and and have some fun in the outdoors. So, but Dana, everybody else. <laughs> Dana's a friend to all regions. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could, for oblivious Eastern people, if there are any, could you yeah. uh, give a tour of your league, like a brief tour, what it's like to play it, and maybe what are a few of the hard spots to go and why they're tough? Yeah, certainly. I, I, and I think, uh, well, first of all, let's start with, I don't know how many places out east, you know, the, the center of the universe, uh, <laughs> have a place like BYU. Okay, there's 20,000 people uh, that roll in there, and they are as dedicated to the cause of, of cheering for their Cougars as, as any place I've ever been. And we've been fortunate enough to, to basically be everywhere. I think probably the only places we haven't played is, is uh, you know, the Dean Dome or something. But uh, uh, unbelievable home court, unbelievable effort they play with there. And a uh, un really, really difficult team and, and place to play because of the way Dave uh, uh, Rose coaches them up. And then you kind of shift from that into more like probably like old school Big East kind of smaller venues, band boxes, which to me are harder to play in than the 15,000-seat cavernous arenas because every time Gonzaga plays, it's sold out. And every time Gonzaga plays, I tell the players, it's a storm the court opportunity. If we lose, they're going to storm the court. And so the other thing that happens in our league is our league is a really skilled league. And so – a lot of times maybe it doesn't look like it, but it's, it's harder to game plan and deal with our league when the five-man can pick and pop and shoot threes, you know, and the four-man obviously can do the same. And, and uh, you know, the teams are, are pretty diabolical about the type of offenses and, and things they run, and they don't mind game planning for the Zags, whether it's do crazy stuff on defense just to see if they can throw us off. So uh, it's about as good as I can do. Yeah. Nice weather places. I mean, we're in, in January, February. We're, we're in San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles. So it's not horrible. <laughs> in the center of the section to the right. Uh, Paula Bove in Arizona Republic. Uh, I know a lot has been written about your seven-footers. Uh, different. They come from different backgrounds, um, different experience levels. What has been? What have you seen about the evolution of their relationship this season? What's? What have you noticed? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great uh, uh, question. Uh, what I've seen is Shemi started as kind of the, you know, like the 100% total mentor teaching uh, Zach everything, you know, he possibly could, you know, to now, you know, where it started evolving to, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Shemi brings this and Zach brings that. And I think they, they both understand just, just at, the, at the highest level. I know our staff does. I mean, Zach doesn't get his name called at the start of the game, but he's always been a starter to me. Um, I have no problem and have shown that all year, finishing games with him. That's the confidence I have uh, uh, with him and with Killy and Tilly. Uh, so I, I think, you know, it, it's, it's evolved uh, into that. We've, we've always been trying throughout the year to find ways where we can play them together, but just because of foul trouble or also game planning uh, and uh, – as far as 
Jonathan Williams factors into that because just he's so versatile and so good defensively for us with our switches and and everything we're doing there that uh, you know that's that's played a part. But uh, obviously, uh, you know you saw that Saturday we're more than comfortable playing them together and they're really good together. And you'll see it tomorrow night uh, uh, too. We're going to have to play stretches with them uh, also. In the back of the room, in the center, Jermaine. Jermaine Franklin with TSN. Uh, Coach, you mentioned earlier that. Both teams like to throw the ball inside. Can you talk a little bit about that matchup and uh, what needs to occur for Zach and Shimmick to have success tomorrow? Uh, stay out of foul trouble is the first thing. You know, I mean, I think both these teams are, are probably facing for the first time, uh, you know, depth that mirrors each other inside but also a willingness to just keep going and going in there whether it's off the pass or even off offensive rebounds uh, to generate a lot of offense uh, inside out and I, I think you know foul trouble is my biggest concern just just dealing with those with those guys and the numbers and the, and the depth uh, uh, that they have at those spots and then just blocking them out I mean we got to block them out and, and uh, you know it's just an entity that uh, we faced a really good offensive rebounding team in in South Carolina. We, uh, West Virginia was an excellent offensive rebound team. Their percentages were very high, and a lot of their offense was generated from that. But, uh, I mean, Carolina is just a different uh, entity from that. So uh, it's more about just talking about it and being aware. I'm not going to go – kill them today for 45 minutes and rebound drills and, and walk out there with four walk-ons tomorrow. So uh, it's a fine line. Coach, we'll move all the way to the right side in the front. Mark. Uh, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. I was wondering if you could walk us through kind of uh, both your recruitment of Zach, you know, when he first came on your radar and, and how that relationship developed, and then whether you expected that uh, just as a freshman he'd be, you know, doing what he's doing. Yeah, no, we uh, – we identified Zebo or Zach Collins a long time ago and, and liked him. Um, thought he'd be a perfect fit, uh, you know, for how we played. Uh, loved his intensity, loved his effort. His skill uh, package was just starting to come. Uh, uh, then his father's done a, a great job of, of, you know, working him out through the years and, and preparing him. He's a big guy too, and so he understands that. And, and I think he's done a good job mentally just – you know, Zach's a tough, tough guy. Uh, the biggest adjustment usually kids from high school to college have is just how intense the game is and how physical it is. And there was very little uh, learning curve for, for Josh or, or Zach on that uh, plane. Uh, I mean, he, he uh, from the jump, was uh, ready to go. And he, sometimes he gets a little too intense. We've got to back him off, but that's a good thing. That's a lot better than having to, to uh, amp it up. Uh, so his skill set has grown since he's been at Gonzaga because he's a worker and he really, really wants to be good. Uh, and then obviously his athleticism, you know, uh, stands out. And, and uh, he's been good from the jump from us. From day one, he's been uh, uh, exceptional. And before we get to the next question, we'd like to welcome in student athletes from Gonzaga, Shemek Karnowski, Jonathan Williams, and Nigel Williams Goss. They're taking their spots on the dais right now. We have about seven more minutes for questions for Coach Few or the student athletes from Gonzaga. Our next question is all the way to the right side in the second row. Uh, Mark, uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, I have two kind of unrelated questions. Um, first, you, you've talked a few times this week about um, how you know the, the story of this team is how all the, all the new faces came together and assimilated. Um, so w what has this year sort of taught you about team building and, and team concept? And, and two, uh, what kind of card player is Roy? Is, is Roy? Oh, wow. Uh, let's go with that one. Or no, we'll go team building first. So uh, actually that uh, team building is, is, is real and sometimes you have to have a plan. I think I've always just banked on our chemistry at Gonzaga and our culture to do that. But I think uh, having a plan to uh, – you know, uh, to help these guys and facilitate it. I'll, I'll certainly always be doing that from here on out with my, uh, my teams. But uh, I think what it shows is just when you start 
you know, maybe thinking, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody, uh, that the, the generation of kids coming up are entitled and spoiled and don't want to do this and don't want to do that. The sacrifices these guys have made on this team to put us in this position, uh, and every one of them has made a sacrifice because we're deep and we're really, really good. And, and to be those things, you've got to give up minutes, you've got to give up shots, you've got to give up, you know, well, how come I'm not guarding the other good team's best guy, you know, and, and, and things like that. Uh, and these guys have done it. Every one of them, from Shemek to Zach to, to Josh Perkins to, to J3 to, to Nigel. I mean, it's, you know, when you got seven, eight guys, I got seven, eight guys that can score 15, 16 points a game on you. And, uh, but it's not all going to happen on the same night. And, and these guys have really bought into that. And, and it's just been a special, special uh, year because of that. And, and, and it's on them, man. They, they're the ones who did it. I don't think it's anything I said or did. But uh, it's on them and how good a people they are and how they were raised. As far as Roy Williams, he's an excellent uh, card player. He's so good uh, that we have a game, uh, uh, seven-card stud game, that's got some variables to it that we call Roy Williams. And uh, we were stuck at the lake two summers ago with my kids, and we had a discrepancy, which is unfortunate. They're starting to get into poker, but um, at least it keeps them around, and they hang out with me. That's about the only time they hang out with me out there. And uh, uh, So we called Roy on the cell phone, and then my kids just now think the world of him because he picks up his phone, and I put him on speaker, and he had to explain uh, Roy Williams to him. So uh, it's a good game, though. It's a good game. All the way in the back on the right side. Mark, and maybe for Nigel as well, Nick Kupke, Fox 12, Oregon. Being from Crestwell, being from Happy Valley, what does it mean to, you know, growing up, being able to carry the torch for West Coast basketball and shine this light on Spokane now? Oh, I mean, I don't think I'm carrying the torch for West Coast basketball. There's so many players uh, along the West Coast. But um, obviously, all of us are proud of where we come from. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our roots and uh, where we grew up. So. Uh, anytime you can do something as special as playing in the Final Four and playing in the National Championship game, uh, especially coming from a small city like Happy Valley, uh, it was really cool. And I've had a lot of text messages from um, even just acquaintances from the area that just tell me how proud uh, of me that they are. And I think that's really cool. To the left side, right of the aisle, Jeff. You guys all wonder if, like I do, like, if everybody's happy from Happy Valley, I mean, Nigel, <laughs> Nigel's like the happiest, most positive, one of the most positive dudes I've ever coached. And it's just, I kind of want to go back there and get another guy just to <laughs> make, get another happy guy on my team. <laughs> Mark, uh, Jeff Eisenberg from Yahoo Sports. Um, I, I'm curious the, the impact of the BYU loss on your season. And look, I, I know you guys would be thrilled to be here with one loss, two losses, three losses. But do you allow yourselves to think that you were kind of 10, 12 minutes away from going into tomorrow's game with an undefeated record? I, I, I literally haven't spent any time uh, on it at all. In fact, I ran into uh, Dave uh, Rose uh, today. And uh, he's like the most... He told me he's the most popular guy on the circuit, giving uh, interviews on how to beat the zag. So, uh, uh, and he's a great guy. Uh, no, I, I really haven't. The, the best text uh, talk I got was from somebody who really helped us on that team building uh, trip of ours. Is John Hammermeister? He's kind of our sports psych guy. Does a lot of stuff for U.S. ski team and Pittsburgh Pirates and all that. He happens to be on campus at Gonzaga, and uh, he texted me that night or that day and just said, "Hey." You know, we'll find out in a month whether this is good or bad. We're not going to know today. I mean, I, I think he, that was uh, pretty clairvoyant there by uh, uh, him to, to kind of like, and he was right. Uh, we could have went either way. Uh, and these guys made it go the right way, and, and, and I'm sure it was a factor in helping us get to here. On the right side in the front, Dan. Yeah, hey, Dan Wolken, USA Today. To piggyback off that, uh, I'd like Nigel's thoughts uh, on, on it and, and Mark. Um, when you come out of that BYU game, does it make you question anything about the team, about what you're doing, about does something need to change going into the NCAA tournament because it was so late in the season? Nigel, first, please, then coach. Yeah, no, it definitely didn't make us question anything that we were doing. I mean, even if you look at that game, I think we led for like 30-plus minutes of the game. So 
Uh, and we're still sitting at 29 and one, so it wasn't like we had uh, any sort of a bad year. But um, it just like let us know that when we deviate from our process and what we had done uh, the rest of the year, you know, we're susceptible to losing games. And uh, more than anything, I just feel like that taste of losing, you know, how we felt in the locker room afterwards, uh, was something that we wanted to never feel again. And uh, we just took it upon ourselves to say, hey, look. You know, we felt it now. We still have uh, two more goals ahead of us uh, going into the WCC tournament. That was one of our preseason goals. We wanted to win that tournament. And then obviously to be sitting here uh, 40 minutes from a national championship. So uh, we said, let's just learn from it. We, we, we felt what it's like. We don't have to do it again. And uh, let's just move forward. And so uh, just a credit to our guys for staying mentally tough and, and focused and uh, getting us to this point. And Jonathan, can we ask you to ask, also answer that one? Uh, it was a tough loss, like Naja just said, but um, we didn't um, we just try to uh, stay together, uh, stick together, um, come to practice the next day with a great mindset and uh, listen to the coaches. And like, like Naja said, don't deviate from the plan, stick with the process, and um, just follow God's plan. So that's it. And coach. I'll defer to the 51st president of the United States down there. He, he speaks for me, speaks better than me. So, no, they, they, they said exactly that was our approach. Uh, it was one time this year where we probably deviated more from our process than, uh, than anything, and it, and it cost us. But I think it taught us a valuable lesson. Coaches, uh, players in general, we've been winning for a reason. And, uh, you know, we need to – to make sure we remind ourselves what those reasons were. And the final question for Gonzaga, Pat. Yeah, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports for Shemek. Uh, your coach was saying earlier how many, like, pick and pop. How many? Sorry. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, no, the coach was saying earlier how many pick and pop five guys you've played in your, con in your conference. Kennedy Meeks is nothing like that. He plays more similarly to you. Uh, what do you think that matchup is going to be like? I mean, I think it's going to be, you know, a lot of uh, big bodies hitting around. Uh, you know, he's a big guy like me, like you said. You know, he likes to play back to the basket a lot. So, obviously, I try to uh, stop him uh, from going uh, to his moves. You know, I think our plan is going to be ready. Uh, we're going to go through that uh, today in practice. I think uh, our coaches and, uh, you know, all the players were great at dialed, dialed in the entire season to make sure we take uh, – you know the other team's strengths, and you know I would just try to go out there and compete uh, as well as I can. We'd like to thank Nigel, Jonathan, Shemek, and Coach Few for joining us here in the main interview room. Coach Few is going to get on with his other rights holder responsibilities, and Nigel, Jonathan, Shemek, and some other Gonzaga student athletes are headed to the breakout rooms at this time. That's going to be from 12:35 to 12:55, and from 1 to 1:30. Their teammates will be available in the locker room for media availability. That's breakouts from 1235 to 1255, and then from 1 to 130, open locker room session. We'll be back here with North Carolina head coach Roy Williams at 145 in the main.